Hey guys, I want to show you something that sounds great and is not too difficult to execute. Let me play a little something for you and then we'll break it down. Okay, let's discuss what I've played. I want to draw your attention to two particular parts in this little piece. These are the two turnarounds. So the piece goes... And here's the first turnaround. Um, So it's this particular part, just this little motion. And what I play when I play the piece was... The second place I want to draw your attention to is the second turnaround towards the end of the song. And now comes... So again, I have this particular melody or motion which I play with chords in both hands. Let's discuss these two particular points in the piece. These two points use a concept called planing. And I'd like to explain what planing is and discuss the two different types of planing that are commonly used. To do this, let's take a simple melody. Let's take Mary Had a Little Lamb. In the key of C. Now, this starts with, you know, it's very simple. It has a, you know, plays is played over a C major. And let me play then the first note with a C major in my right hand. Now what I can do is I can transpose this C major as is up and down, maintaining the intervals between the notes, while of course making sure that I'm playing the melody in the top note each time. So it would sound something like this. I'm playing three chords, C major, B flat major, A flat major. This is what I would call chromatic planing. Basically taking a particular shape, it can be any shape in the right hand or in the left hand, and moving it, transposing it as is around the keyboard to play a particular melody, or maybe a line or something like that. I can plane also in my left hand. And by the way, it doesn't have to be anything that's related to the right hand. For example, I can accompany myself by starting out with a G major in the left hand, and I can plane it. So I can play a G major, then an A flat major, and a B flat major. So anytime I play a C, I'll play a G. Anytime I play a B flat, I'll play an A flat. And anytime I play an A flat, I play a B flat. And it would sound. Now, it sounds dissonant, of course, I mean, no question about it. But it is this dissonance which creates an interesting tension that eventually resolves to something. And sort of the ground rule in jazz, and this was, uh, I think, was put forth by uh, Mingus, uh, that there are no wrong notes in jazz, only wrong resolutions. 
So listeners will often tolerate a large amount of dissonance as long as you resolve it to something that is consonant. So let's go back with this in mind to the first turnaround and see what I'm doing there. So I land on a G dominant seventh or a G dominant ninth, and then I want to play this little melody in my right hand. And I do this by planing. And look at this. I'm playing a B flat major, the right hand. The top note is the first note of the melody, a D. And I'm going to plane it. That's all. Three chords, that's the entire motion. So a B flat, a C, C major, and a D flat major. I'm also planing in my left hand. I'm starting out from a G dominant 7, and then I move down to an F sharp dominant 7, and then to an F dominant 7. And at the end of this motion, I land on an E minor. Put together, this is the first chord, the second chord, the third chord, and the resolution to E minor. Now, we could discuss this in terms of the diatonic function of the harmonies, you know, we're playing uh, in terms of maybe triton substitutions and so on, but it makes more sense to think about this in terms of planing, in my opinion. It happens or occurs very briefly and it creates a lot of tension, but resolves very nicely to this very consonant E minor. The second place where planing occurs is this. So I'm referring specifically to this motion. Again, you can immediately see, now that you've sort of seen the first planing example, that I have a shape in one hand that's moving as a whole, and a shape in the left hand as well that is moving as a whole. They're moving in opposite directions, which is also kind of a nice thing, because it creates opposing motion. This is a different type of planing, which is called diatonic. And to explain this, let's go back to Mary Had a Little Lamp and start again from a C major chord. Now, when we move this shape diatonically, we will basically move the notes around while staying in the C major scale. So I'll take this shape and move it down. Basically, I'm moving the notes around a certain number of steps within the C major scale. This is diatonic planing. Um, you know, I, I can take pretty much any shape. Let's take, again, let's stay in the C major scale. Let's take uh, this triad and just moving it around. All of this is diatonic planing. The nature of the chord changes, right? The first chord is a major chord. This is a diminished chord. This is a minor chord, diminished, major. So diatonic planing changes the nature of the chord, but stays within the key. As with chromatic planing, you can do this in both hands. You know, I can choose any chord in the left hand. Let's say F. I can plane it diatonically as well. The 
same sort of ideas apply here as well. I mean, the same sort that we use for chromatic planing. Now let's go back and look at the second turnaround. And you can immediately see that what I'm doing here is diatonic planing. In the right hand, I'm starting with a, I want to play a melody that sounds like this. I start out with an F up here and I play it, I play an F major chord in the right hand and I move it down diatonically, I plane it down diatonically. Just like this. In the right hand, I'm playing a D minor 7th chord and I'm moving it up. So in, see, as, in, as a whole, this entire shape moves while staying in the C major key, which is the key of the song. This moves up, becomes an E minor, and this moves up again and becomes an F major 7. The next chord is already not planed. So this is planing and this is already not. As with chromatic planing, this works in a lot of different situations that you wouldn't expect it to work, that it shouldn't fit into the sort of natural harmony of the song, just because you're creating a lot of tension and hopefully resolving it to something that the listener um, would find consonant. Of course, you don't have to resolve it. You can decide to keep the tension as you're playing, and you know that could be part of the idea. And this was popular in jazz, uh, or became popular in the 60s and 70s when modal jazz came, you know, became something. But at any rate, planing, as I've shown you in these two examples, is a highly useful tool that can create motion and tension and help you sort of resolve them to something within the song. That's it. I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.